What's up Amazon sellers? Is online arbitrage still profitable? In this video today, I'm going to share with you the thing that I've learned selling on Amazon for the last five years. From how you can make money using online arbitrage to other important things to know. Stay tuned. If you're new to this channel, my name is Thomas Parkinson and I've been selling on Amazon now for the last five years. I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller in the UK and a seven-figure Amazon seller in the USA. Now in this video today, I'm going to share with you, number one, what is online arbitrage? Number two, I'm going to talk about how can you make money using online arbitrage? Number three, I'm going to talk about how much I make selling on Amazon. Number four, I'm going to talk about what do other people make selling on Amazon. Number five, I'm going to share with you, is online arbitrage? still profitable and finally number six I'm going to share my personal thoughts behind is online arbitrage worth it let's get started okay so first things first what is online arbitrage basically online arbitrage is the process of buying products from online retailers and selling them for more money on a different marketplace like amazon generally buy low sell high on amazon and make a profit now by using this business model you are free from having to go in store to buy your products you can simply find those products on any website online where you see the opportunity to buy low and then to resell high on amazon is a Available. The next question you might be asking is how can you make money using online arbitrage? Step one, choose a category that is going to work for beginners. Now, one of the most common mistakes I see with all sellers when they start out is they try and go for well-known products, brands, or categories that they know. A good example would be toys and games and Lego, for example. Now, unfortunately, toys and games and Lego are part of what's known as a gated category. You're restricted to sell them as a new seller on Amazon. They're only for sellers who can prove that they buy from distributor, manufacturer, or wholesaler. Now don't worry too much about that. What I will say is go for a category which maybe isn't as popular. Let's say for example grocery. Find items in the grocery, they're fast selling, they're going to be easy to buy and are available from thousands of online retailers because you can buy them their everyday goods. What you're looking for is those products that you can just keep buying over and over again and grocery is going to be those kind of items which I really like. Now once you get doing this and start buying those products and reselling them in Amazon for a profit and that's going to be ideal for getting you started as a beginner. Now over time you you can obviously look at getting ungated and obviously I'll tell you more about that later on. Now one thing I just said is find a category and types of products that are really going to work for you and grocery is a good example and I just explained that. Now the next thing you're probably thinking about is great thanks Tom for letting me know about the grocery category I'm going to get started there but where do I find the suppliers? Well let me solve that problem for you. Down below I'm going to drop a link to my top 100 online arbitrage supplier websites. Quite simply I will drop the US and the UK link down there so if you're thinking about getting started you want to know what the top 100 online arbitrage websites that I have but look at the link down below you have to download my free content which is a list of top 100 suppliers and that's going to help you out. Now my second step I'm going to recommend for you is use tools to find and analyze the deals that you want to buy. One of the processes that you've got to think about within the business that can really consume most of your time, the reason why I hire so many staff to grow my business is actually product sourcing. Now, with that being said, by using tools to help you find these deals and also analyze them quicker, it's going to speed up the process of sourcing to help you find more product to resell on Amazon for a profit. Now, what I will say is that there are many, many tools out there that you can buy and also invest, but what we really want to do is just get you focused on the right ones and preferably the ones that are going to be the cheapest to support you in getting the results that you need. Tools like Seller Amp or SaaS as it's called and this is going to help you analyze deals quicker. It does have a charge, it's about $20 per month but it's something that you really worthwhile buying. Also other tools like DS Amazon Quick View, it's a Chrome extension, this is free. Right click Amazon search is another free tool that we absolutely love. And final one I'd recommend Keeper, quite simply going to show you the history of a product over the time, the price, the sales velocity, and all the competition that helps you do the further analysis. And again, it's about 15 euros a month. So some really great tools there. Obviously, it's not going to break the bank. Now, these are some common tools that a lot of sellers will use. And really, that's all you need to get started. And it's going to help speed up and automate the process of going through sourcing and analyzing those products to buy low to resell high on Amazon for a profit, making sure the products you're actually buying are profitable and they're not duds. Now, in addition to this, you've got the tools you've got the website you might want to think about deal web 
website whereby other people are sharing great products which are a low, low price, which might be possible for you to really speed it up. These are going to include websites such as Slick Deals, Brickseat, and Latest Deals. Now, these three websites are going to provide you with a list of some really cheap products that other people are sharing in different online stores. You can then choose to do the analysis and compare their prices versus Amazon, see whether you can buy them and sell them on Amazon and return a profit or not. Now, the third step that you're going to think about is calculating your profitability, particularly using an FBA calculator. Now, first thing you need to know when doing deal analysis is whether or not your product is going to turn a profit and it's going to be enough profit for you to resell on Amazon. Now, once you've found a product, maybe from the supplier website or from those deal sites that we just talked about, you want to understand if that product is going to be profitable for you to buy low to resell high on Amazon. And you're going to compare that product from the deal website versus the same product on Amazon. Now, quite simply, Amazon does have a free Amazon FBA revenue calculator, which can help you determine profitability, which is going to be really helpful. But I probably really recommend using Seller Amp or SaaS, the small fee, but it's going to speed up and give you so much much more information, which is helpful. It's going to calculate a couple of key things for you, such as net profits, net margin, and even the sales per month, which are going to really help you out. Now, the fourth step you want to think about once you've found a product and you've analyzed the profit is really accessing demand using the bestseller rank or the sales estimator. One of the things that you should be looking for is not only profitability and margin or ROI, but is the product in demand? Is it actually selling? And for this, you're going to be using the bestseller rank, BSR on Amazon's product listing page. Now, once you have that seller rank, it's going to help you understand how well this product is selling. Now, you can use a paid tool like SaaS or Seller Amp or a free tool like Jungle Scout's free sales estimator where you can enter the seller rank, the marketplace and the product category, and then it's going to give you an estimated number of sales per month, which is going to help you. Now, by having this information, you're going to have a basis on how many units to buy for inventory. So you've finished your analyzing, you've done your listing, you see the profitability of the product you can now buy it and you know how many to buy but the final one is reselling it high now putting that price into amazon seller central onto the listing to show how much you want to be selling it for and obviously getting that product sold on amazon and turning you a nice sweet profit now this leads me nicely onto how much money i make selling on amazon now you might be asking how much profit do i make in my amazon business number one i'm going to drop your sales chart for my usa business we'll drop it around here and see quite simply i probably do about one to 1.2 million and that's in the last Last 12 months. Within that business, I would generally walk away. This is after everything. So all the cost of my staff, the stock, the Amazon fees, everything like that. I walk away with about 10%. This business of about 1.2 million will do about 120,000 will walk away in a year. Now for me, that might not be very much or you might not think that's not very much, but quite simply, I'm not really working that business much. I have a big team of VAs who run the whole business for me. I'm pretty much running that business in about two to four hours per week. Now in the UK, I'm dropping sales chart around here. That one, we are generally, should we say, operating around 3 million to 3.5 million mark. And this one is a little bit lower. I run about 5% take home after everything. Why? Well, quite simply with this business, we use a lot of other people's money, a lot of credit. We actually start this one higher versus the USA. So I have a lot more staff in this one, a lot more costs, and also a lot of the operating costs of all that debt that we use. And generally, the UK market has lower margins than what we see in the US. So again, I'm going to be walking out with about 100 to 100 50 on that one as well. So across both businesses, 300. Now this might not be too much. You're thinking you're like, wow, that's like 5 million and you're not taking very much out of it. Really understand. But again, I'm only working that two hours a week on both businesses and I'm happy to take less money to do one hell of a lot less work. So what do other people say they're making when they're selling on Amazon? When I talk to a lot of other sellers and what they share, generally in the US, they're probably going to be operating about 15 to 20% net. In the UK, they'll generally operate between about 10 and 15%. These these are generally on lower volumes of sales, so probably not as much sales as I'm doing, but also as well, they'll probably be more proactive in the business. So for me, I'm very much an owner of the business. I invest in it, that's it. I don't really do any work, but a lot of the other sellers will probably be working quite proactively. And the net result is that they will be earning more money. So what can you expect to make when you're selling? I would probably be thinking about looking between 15 and 20% of your sales. That would be a good guide to be what you're doing. And I'll share some top tips in a bit about how you can even increase that number even so this leads me nicely on to my fifth chapter, which is, is online arbitrage still profitable? Well, in this chapter, I'm going to be highlighting two things. One is the challenges to making a profit on Amazon. And the second is how to make extra profits on Amazon. So first of all, let's start with some of the challenges. Now, the first and the most common challenge
challenge you're going to get is competition. Now, by the very way Amazon works is you're going to have multiple people who are offering the same products. For example, when a customer comes in and buys, there might be 20 people offering it, but only one person can make that sale or one seller. And the way Amazon deal with this is what's called the buy box. Whoever the name is under the buy box is going to win that sale. Now, what we see is that when people are competing for the same sale or competing with the same product, we generally see prices can become in decline. Prices are competing against one another. And this is called price tanking. Basically, price tanking takes place when two competitors such as two amazon sellers on the marketplace are constantly reducing their prices going down 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 and now this happens your profit margins can decrease and in worst case scenario you can even lose money now the second challenge is going to be cost of operating amazon business things like your software and even your vas are really going to actually impact your business because they are taking the money away from the profits that you're making now the one thing that i will say is yes these are costs but also as well these are costs which are going to help you towards making money say you're a pricing software while they do cost money they can also help you become more competitive helping you win that buy box helping you make sales on amazon so don't worry about all the costs just make sure you're keeping them in balance and go for your profitability and you're still turning a profit now the third challenge you're going to face is the cost of goods now the cost of goods or the landing cost of your products that you're buying to resell on amazon is probably going to be the biggest cost that you will incur within your amazon business now the landing cost is calculated by taking the total cost of the item itself that you bought packaging the item for shipment in Amazon, and then actually shipping it to the Amazon fulfillment centers as if you do the FBA program. Now you might be asking, how does this affect your profits? Well, let's say for example, you bought an item that has a small value and you expect there's gonna be to say, a small profit in that product. Now, by adding in all these extra costs, like packaging the item itself, shipping it into Amazon, it can really reduce down that profit. So just be mindful, tools like Selleramp are really gonna help you identify those costs and make sure that you're factoring that in when you're doing your deal analysis. Again, if you buy higher value products with bigger profits, it can cover that and it can return you a better profit. Now, the fourth and the final one I'm going to talk about as a challenge for you is taxes. In the USA, you have sales tax and it's a consideration you need to buy or factor in when you're buying your products. And also in the UK, you have VAT. Now, these things are going to cost you not only on the actual product itself, but also the services you have and you need to factor them in. If you don't factor them in, they're going to eat into your bottom line profitability. And as a result, it could cause your business to make a loss. So make sure you're considering your taxes in regards to the product you buy and even the services such as preps centers and software that you're using which is going to have an impact upon your business now i've talked about some of the problems that you're going to face so let's talk about how you can affect profitability that's going to improve it on selling on amazon let's go through some top tips now number one i'm really going to talk about cash back Simply put, cashback is when you buy something and you get a percentage of the amount of money you spent back in the form of cashback. And generally, this comes a few months later. Now, there are different types of cashback, and one of the ones that I really love to use is cashback websites. Basically, cashback websites like, if you say, Top Cashback, Quidco, there are so many cashback websites out there that can really support you. And these work directly with suppliers or manufacturers, give you a percentage of your spend back a few months later. So when you're going to a supplier or a website to make a purchase, do make sure you're looking at the cashback websites and you're using their link to do it to make the purchase. Why? Because they're going to give you a percentage spend back and do make sure it's actually tracking. That's a really important point because if it doesn't track, you're going to get nothing. Now, if you want to learn more about cashback, I'll drop a link to a video up above called how to make more money using cashback. Check that out. I think you'll like it. Now, my second top tip for you is going to be called credit cards. In my Amazon business, we have multiple credit cards, pretty much Amex Platinum. I have three of them, I think. I have Amex Gold. We even use a company called Capital on Tap as well. Since credit cards allow you to buy items online, generally using credit, that's going to help you out by, as you say, being able to buy more stock because you have more cash available, i.e. you're using other people's money. Now, in addition to that, credit cards are also going to give you protection, which I completely love in the event of fraud or maybe even suppliers doesn't deliver. And the third thing I love about credit cards is points or rewards or even cash back. For example, with the points, I have recently traveled first class and I've done should say, pretty much traveled the world in five star hotels for free through these points. I absolutely love it. Now, the third and the final way to should say, increase your profits on Amazon is through voucher codes. Finding products that are profitable is a great thing. Getting those products at a cheaper price is even better. Why? By well, getting discounts, getting voucher codes are reducing the price that you pay at the point of purchase for your online purchase is really going to help you 
turn a good ROI into an amazing ROI, making you more money. When you're considering voucher codes, do consider places like Honey Chrome extension, which offers voucher codes to absolutely love, or even Googling voucher codes or signing up to newsletters for the website, they'll share some voucher codes as well. Again, giving you a discount on the price you're paying. Now, the one thing which I will say is if you're thinking about getting started on Amazon, do have a look at the link down below. I'm gonna drop a free course that I've created called How to Get Started Selling on Amazon. It's a free express course. It's a seven day course that's gonna support you getting everything you need to know to get started on Amazon in step-by-step -step chunks. Some of my YouTube videos and my private collection is gonna help you level up your game and see if this is the right business model for you. Have a look at the link down below, Fast Track FBA Express course. Now, after sharing with you all the information about profitability on Amazon, you might be asking me, is online arbitrage still profitable? Well, what am I gonna say? The short answer is yes. There are gonna be lots of people out there who have maybe tried it and failed, but you know what? Anything in life, whether it be a business or even a job, there are gonna be people who have failed. That's a fact. But are people right now making money, buying low, reselling high on Amazon? Yeah, 100%. If you think about it at a very simple level, you're buying low, reselling high. It's called trade. It's been around for about 4,000 years. It's been around for longer than money. And the idea is you're just buying products cheap to resell high somewhere else. And all we do is we set resell high on the Amazon marketplace. And this is gonna to continue to be around for thousands of years to come. And there's always gonna be an opportunity to take advantage of those price differences. The next question you need to be asking yourself is do you wanna be part of it? Do you wanna turn that profit as well? So I leave that question up to you. Now, what I will say is after, should we say, understanding is online arbitrage still profitable, you might want to get started with a playlist I created previously called Amazon Arbitrage for Beginners. I'll drop that around here. Now, hopefully you've liked this video. If you have, give me a big thumbs up. And hey, if you think someone needs to hear this video and see what's going on, hit the share button and drop them a link. And finally, if you want to see more about my journey and what I'm doing, do hit subscribe down below. But for myself, Thomas Parkinson, Star Trek FBA, thank you very much.